The story of the year is Google and their AI catch up. Everything else is second place. Google started the year as a has been. In 2024, I did not spend much time talking about what Google was doing because Google was not doing very much. OpenAI was the story. OpenAI was launching stuff. Anthropic was launching stuff. AWS was launching stuff at reInvent. And now Google has come and trumped all of that in a matter of a couple of weeks. And I'm just blown away. This was supposed to be OpenAI's 12 days of OpenAI. They wanted to take center stage here. They, so far, have really failed, even though they dropped O1, which is an incredibly powerful reasoning agent. Well, not quite an agent, right? It's an incredibly powerful reasoning LLM, and it will probably be an agent as soon as they integrate it into an agent framework in January. But for now, they're not the center of attention. I want to go through nine releases that Google has launched in just the last few days because I want you to remember how much Google is shipping to change the narrative that Google needs to catch up. Number one, Google shipped a new language model, Gemini 2.0. It's absolutely incredible. It is a state-of-the-art language model. It's incredibly fast. It is so fast, they are having to ask the Flash model to slow down. People are writing into Google saying, this whole idea of streaming text is breaking because Google Gemini 2.0 Flash is too fast. It's too fast. Imagine asking your product to slow down. I've never had that happen. They launched Willow, a quantum chip that shows error reduction as you add qubits, which is an absolutely massive development. They launched Video FX. That was just yesterday. Video FX is hands down better than Sora right now. And people are being shy about that, but I won't be because I have seen the video comparison. If you pick the correct prompt, a prompt that requires multiple parts of the video to work in parallel like a real world model does, it is clear which one actually understands the real world and can produce good video better. And it's video FX. They also call the model itself VO2, VEO2. So if you see that floating around, it's the same model. Here's an example prompt that I saw. A chef cutting a piece of steak with steam rising from the piece of steak. Sounds simple, easy to describe, but if you have to visualize that with a video, you have to have the knife moving correctly through the meat, the texture needs to feel right so the knife is cutting appropriately, not too easily. You have to have the piece of meat moving, just jiggling slightly in the right way in parallel with the knife as you saw at it. You have to have the steam rising from the right parts of the meat clearly. You have to have the hand working correctly with the knife. There's a lot. The only one I saw that worked was video FX. And look, that was just release number three. There's nine of these. Image FX. It's a mid-journey killer. It's a mid-journey killer, and you know it is because mid-journey's founder went on Twitter and got very depressed and defensive about how he thinks he's running a great company, which by the way, I love mid-journey. I still use mid-journey. I do think it's a great product. So nothing against mid-journey. But for casual users who want to generate images, the tools that Google is launching are just not even close. Like they're so much easier. You don't have to go to a Discord with ImageFX. You just go to Google Labs and you start playing around and you type and you see images. It's what it should be. And I'm not even getting to Whisk. Whisk wasn't on my list of nine. Whisk is a cute little play toy for kids where you upload a couple of photos and you put them together and you can make like a sticker looking thing, right? Like they just threw that out there like, hey, we've also got this. Music FX. There's also a DJ product that they dropped. I haven't even had time to play with it. It's like what I do to play with AI stuff and Google's launching so much, I don't even have time for it. Deep research, absolutely incredible. I do wish they would increase the token limit on this. It will survey so many different sites in a short period of time. It, it literally cuts research time by tens of hours. It's like a 10X saver on research. It's accurate citations. It's going to transform academia in 2025. And the only thing stopping it from being a complete banger is that it limits you to about five pages of output. I think they're going to fix that. It's, it's amazing. That was the feature that made me sign right back up for a paid Gemini subscription. I needed the deep research. Notebook LM Plus. So they launched Notebook LM. Now they're refining it. New interface, chance to talk with the host, Notebook LM Plus. They're, 
They're not just shipping and forgetting anymore. They're actually shipping improvements. Astra. So Astra is a situationally aware AI agent where you can go in and say, hey, you talk to your phone, you talk to your Google Pixel and say, hey, uh, what are what are the lanterns hanging on the temple up there? And Astra will answer. Or, hey, what does this sign say in Japanese? Uh, I'm going to the train station. And it will tell you if it's going to the train station or not. That's what Astra is for. It's that sort of situationally aware, look through the camera, tell you what's going on. By the way, Gemini is using Astra, I think, with the uh, live streaming feature where it live streams off your laptop or off your phone and you can actually see what's going on and talk to Gemini. Very similar thing. So it launched Astra, that's for consumers. And then it also launched Mariner, which is agentic browsing, like book my tickets when I take my next trip. All of that in the space of just a few days, Google is back. And I think that one of the things that's going to be a major storyline in 2025 is with Google's momentum where it is, are the capital reserves that Google brings to the table enough to enable it to win the market in 2025 in a way that OpenAI has been unable to do? They haven't raised the funds for their GPT-6 training run. They are rumored to be having trouble doing that. If they run into funding issues, that could have ramifications for Microsoft's whole position in the AI space. It's really, really interesting. It doesn't mean Microsoft is done by any means. Don't count them out. But Google is shipping in a way that none of the other major players are. So congrats, whoever whoever's shipping at Google. Well done. Very excited. Love the quality. Um, and I'm excited to see what's ahead. Cheers.